Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Amelia and this is Amelia Budgets and thank you so much for tuning in. Here on my channel, I post a lot of different budgeting related videos. So if that is content that sounds like something that you may be interested in, I would love it if you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you can get notified for when I post new videos. It really, really helps out my channel. So anyways, yeah, today I am doing a slightly different video than my norm. Um, and this actually video is kind of like last minute because my YouTube monetization video that went up last week was actually supposed to be going up this week. But because I didn't have a week three spending check-in, I decided to film that video and post it last week instead of now. <laughs> so it essentially left a gap in my schedule for May. But honestly, at this point, I've gotten so many requests to do this video and I've been on doing my YouTube channel for like over 10 months now. So I think I am more confident or more comfortable on the camera anyways. So I wanted to try to film this again because this video actually was requested for me for the first time back in like, I think early September. And I tried to film it, but I like failed miserably. So I'm trying again. And that is a video on all of my different bullet journal spreads in my budgeting notebook. So as you can see here, this is the bullet journal that I have. I've spoken about this before. This bullet journal is actually, I was purchased, I purchased it from the Dollarama. Again, I'm located in Canada. I don't know if the Dollarama is outside of Canada, but I purchased it at the Dollarama. It was $3.50 and I actually did purchase myself another one <laughs> for the new year because I am running out of pages. And as you can see here, $3.50. So not super expensive. I personally really like using a bullet journal for a budget because it saves you from having to like draw out lines. So again, even though you can absolutely use like whatever piece of paper you have, like if you just have line paper lying around, I would like if it's better than nothing for sure. But if you can go to the store, like maybe like your local Dollar Tree or like the Dollarama if you're located in Canada and pick up something that has a little dot grids, I do find it very easy when you're just setting up a budget. So I'm going to open you up and I'm going to walk you through all of the different spreads that I set up when I originally started my budget. So my first spread is probably my favorite spread to be perfectly honest and that's my monthly budget setup. So when I was setting up to make this, I just wanted to keep it as simple as possible. So I was pulling from a bunch of different sources off of like YouTube and Pinterest because truthfully, like I couldn't find anything that was like how to set up a bullet journal for your budget. <laughs> so I kind of had to like make my spreads myself. I just to note am incredibly not creative. I can't do the proper bullet journals with like the stickers and the ones that are like super, super aesthetically pleasing. I knew I had to make something for my myself that was just like very very simple but I still wanted it to look nice because truthfully what I wanted is like a proper planner with like stickers and everything but to be perfectly fair I can't I couldn't really afford it then I truly I like I, I really can't afford it now either but I wanted something that still kind of looked nice so that's what I have here so you can see here this is July so this was the first month I set this up and Again, very, very straightforward. I went on Pinterest and I found like how to make a little banner, which is very, very easy to do. And basically I was just trying to find something that I could consistently stick to on a monthly basis. So that's what I came up with here. So up at the top, I have my income listed out. So I have my income, my estimated income, my actual income, and then whatever the difference was. So basically when I had originally set up this budget for you guys on camera for my July video, you would have only seen this information. And then when I closed out my budget at the end of July that's when you would have seen this and then I would have calculated the difference. You don't obviously need to follow this exact format but I do find it very very straightforward. So yeah as you can see here I have my income then I list out all my fixed expenses. For me what I classify a fixed expense for um for this purpose is like a bill. So something that's like recurring monthly or I consider um, a fixed expense like my sinking funds. You can actually see here, I put my sinking funds under variable, but I changed that to fixed. It was just, this was my first month setting it up. And truthfully for a lot of people, sinking funds should be considered a fixed expense because like if you have to pay a renewal membership or um, on a yearly basis or something, that's not necessarily like something that you can just like say like, oh, it's variable. It is kind of a fixed expense. 
So yeah, I have my fixed expenses, then I have my variable. And again, my variable now just will show groceries, dining out, gas, and miscellaneous. So those are the things that I do my check-ins for. And then down at the bottom, I think is the most important thing, and this is a balance. So what I have is my income, fixed expense, and variable. So that's basically just like the totals. You bring those down to the bottom and you calculate the difference. So you take your income minus your fixed expenses, minus your variable expenses, and then whatever you have left over, that is what you can use as like an extra debt payment, an extra, extra savings payment like whatever you want to do with it I would recommend again I'm obviously very much not a financial advisor I'm just telling you my own personal preference I would recommend if you're starting a new budget don't necessarily start with a zero based budget because you're, you're you're not sure yet and it's one thing to say like okay like I'm going to do a zero based budget and transfer all this extra money to my debt and as soon as I get paid but you don't want to make your account go negative and like if you can actually see in um, August I had actually estimated that I would have $318 left at the end of the month but I didn't I only had 297 so if I had transferred that $318 towards like an extra debt payment at the beginning of the month my account would have gone $21 negative which again you can obviously argue that like maybe if my account was actually that low I wouldn't have spent that extra money but yeah there's there's pros and cons to it each way too because like again I put my fixed expenses as like bills but like for example my hydro bill which is electricity that varies on a monthly basis so let's say I budgeted $70 for whatever reason it ended up being $100 I can't just like bargain with the insurance co or the electricity company and say like, oh, I'm actually only going to pay you less. Like that's not how those sort of bills work. So again, that's why I say like as a way to start out, especially if you're on like a tight income, maybe don't start with a zero based budget. Again, you absolutely can if you want to. I'm not judging you either way. I'm just saying what has worked out really well for me is ultimately zeroing out my budget every month, but not planning to until the month is completely done and I've closed everything down. So yeah, that's what I have for my first setup, which again, I think is very straightforward. I use the Zebra Mild Liners. Um, so here, I use the Zebra Mild Liners. I just have like the five pack. To be perfectly honest, I might have to get more because this pink one in particular is really, really running out of ink, which really only leaves me two colors because I use the blue and I use the green um, and I use the orange in October and I've never used the yellow. So I think I might have to get another package of these. I didn't actually buy these before I started started my budget I had them from before but they are really nice because they're not as like vibrant as some um, other like highlighters like they're like they're mild right they're mild liners so I do like recommend those but you also don't need them for sure and then I also like to use the um the papermate flare pens um in meat like the medium ones I didn't get these specifically they were just at my dollar store they were four dollars for the package um and for reference I think from Amazon the zebra mild liners are nine dollars I checked before so that's just something to note there. So yeah, this this package was $4. So that's why I picked it up. And that's what I used to do my headings. And then my initial, what I was initially using was Muji pens, which is which are these, right? And I had those before, again, I started budgeting in like the 0 0.5 and I still use these for like my red pen, but when I go over budget, um, but I actually now have been using um, Sharpie S gel pens. Um, I didn't need to do these, but Sharpie S gel pens don't smudge as much as the Muji um, um, gel pens. So I wanted to try these and this package of Sharpie S gel pens was $5.99. So if you think about that, I spent $3.50 on the notebook, I spent $9 on the mild liners, I spent $4 on the Papermate flare pens, and I spent $6 on the Sharpie S gel pens. So overall, like to set up my budget, I spent less than $25. But again, you don't need to spend $25. I would recommend just like if you don't have that kind of stuff, just buy something that costs you $3.50 from the dollar store and then be done with it. So anyways, yeah, that's my first setup there. And then here what you can see is my calendar. So obviously a lot of people actually will print out a calendar rather than making one in their bullet journal. I just prefer to have it all in one place, um, especially because when I originally started budgeting, I didn't have cash binders. So my envelopes were loose and I just like, I wanted to keep it more like, uh, more concise. So the one thing to note when you're setting up a calendar, just be very aware of the spacing and like how many dots are on the, the grid in total. Again, that's why I say a bullet journal is very easy, but 
um, and it would be easier for me personally than doing it on lined paper. But again, why I say be aware of the lines is because most, although most months have five weeks, so like here we've got like one, two, three, four, five weeks, there are some months that have more than that. So like actually, if you look at, I believe it's October, October actually has six weeks. And the reason why is because you can see like it has the days one and two, and then it has day 31, like on separate weeks. So you see one, two, three, four, five, six. So I had to adjust the spacing. Again, that's going to be completely personal for like whatever you guys actually do for your budget and what your own personal bullet journal is. I think professional bullet journals do have more dots than this one does but again just try to make it your own i did a four by four grid for each day of the month but as you can see in october i had to decrease that to three by four or four by three because i didn't have enough space and if i wanted to do a four then it wouldn't have left me room to write my banner so those are my first two spreads um, every month. Um, the next spread that I have is my um, my debt overview spread. So again, I do it very, very simple. So I have, again, July debt overview up at the top. What I have done is separate them out into different debt priorities. You don't have to do that, but I do like <laughs> doing it this way. So here you've got debt priority one and debt priority two. So for me, my debt priority ones are my credit cards, and then my debt priority twos are personal loans. You guys can obviously switch that up yourself. Maybe you want to have your credit cards as your debt priority number one, and then your car loan or your student loans. It doesn't really matter. So basically what I do every single month is I write down my balance. I write down the minimum payment and then whatever extra payments I'm able to do at the end of the month. So as you can see here in July, I wasn't able to make any extra payments. The reason why was because I was still trying to save my $1,000 emergency fund at that point. But then if you flip over to August, you can actually see that like I did make an extra payment to my BMO credit card of $262 at the end of August because I obviously had more money left over. And then that $262 would be reflected when I set up my September debt overview because that BMO card dropped quite a bit to only $353. So that's sort of how I do it. Again, very straightforward. And then I always make sure to write a grand total because ultimately... A lot of people, including myself, I want to track my total debt. So like, yes, it's amazing that like I'm working slowly working down on my credit card debt. Like right now, as I'm filming, my credit card debt is like quite a bit less than my debt priority number twos, but it started off as more. And that's like obvious, obviously always a win. But again, total debt is really what I'm interested in the most. So yeah, that's my next spread again. Very basic, very straightforward. Um, my next spread that I have, you guys don't see this very often anymore, and that's my sinking fund spread. So you start off with like whatever sinking funds you want to do. And again, because I was starting fresh in July, my start was all zero. Then I have a plus and a minus and an end. So I add in everything that I want to the sinking fund. If I take out money that month in the sinking fund, you can see that it's negative and then the balance at the very end. So as I'm filming this, April isn't over. <laughs> so you can actually see for April this my spread is different because you see it has the starting balance of everything what I added in but I obviously haven't filled out everything I have done here because I haven't the month isn't over so I don't know exactly what I'm going to be taking out for my sinking funds and honestly I've had issues with that in the past when I like take out money before I like I take out money for my sinking funds and like write it down and close it out and then afterwards like have to like go back and correct it so like you can see here like I had to I had written down that I still had more money in electronics and household than I initially thought but I actually took out more of that in the month before so I had to go back and adjust it so that's fine you can totally do that I'm just telling you what I do on a regular basis so yeah that's my sinking funds um next I think is honestly I think it's the most important thing besides just like trying to set up a budget as a whole um, and that's your weekly check-ins and your spending log so basically what I do every week because I am not a cash budgeter is I track every single thing I spend on like my like myself essentially so obviously like I have my bills and I track those separately on like my monthly spreads but in terms of like variable spending, like if I'm going to the grocery store, if I'm getting gas, or if I'm like going to the store and buying myself a sweater, like all of those things will be on my like weekly spending check-in. So here I've separated out into four different weeks. I like to see a month on a four week basis. I don't like seeing it in five, even though like again, for this first budget, I had a five paycheck month, but I only set up for four weeks. So like here you have July, which was the first through the eighth. 
I actually do that differently now. I do a week based on um, my paychecks because I am paid bi-weekly now. So you actually see that like the last week of April actually goes into May. So you've got May 29th or April 29th through May the 5th. So again, that's just something to note. Um, again, so what you do here is on like with this page and then combine it with this page for your, for your transaction review. What I like to cut do is I write down the date, I write out in what category it is, a, a brief description of the item. So like here it was a miscellaneous purchase, I bought it off of Amazon and it was a gift and I spent $48.77. So I write down all of that and then on a weekly basis, and I think that this is important to do it weekly and not just on a monthly basis, unless, unless you're first starting, like I think doing it on a monthly basis when you first start just to like understand exactly how much you spend. But going forward, I would highly recommend doing it weekly. You, write, you calculate how much you've spent. So for the first week, um, let's look at groceries. So I had groceries, I had a Metro purchase for $24.44, and then I had a Freshco purchase for $21.08. And those were my only two grocery purchases. So when I did the total here spent, so I have groceries for the category for week one, I spent $45.55 or 52 cents. And then if you look back to my initial budget setup, you'll see that I budgeted myself $200 a month for groceries. So I take that $200, I subtract the $45.52 and I'm left with $154.48. And you do that every single week. So like the second week, I spent $41.49 on groceries. So then you take the $154.48, you subtract the $41.49 and you're left with $112.99. So again, I think it's very very easy if you guys have questions please let me know like you can either if you don't feel comfortable leaving them in the comment I do have an email it's just like Amelia budgets at gmail.com the email that I created when I set up this account but yeah um, honestly I find it very easy and it's a good way to look at your money as a whole because again like you can see here I spent $250 this first week so I only had $349 and 98 cents left for the rest of the month and then at like my second week though I spent a lot less so I only spent 115 and then I only spent 108 the third week. And then even though technically at the end of week three, I only had $126.63 left, I actually ended up spending $141.31. So for people who are on like a very, very tight budget, doing these I think is very helpful because like for me for like week three, if someone only had $126.63 left in variable spending at the end of week three, you could be more strict with yourself and be like, okay, maybe I'm gonna do that $126 in cash. Or maybe instead of spending $4.41 at dining out for whatever I did, it was probably iced coffee because it was the summer. Um, maybe you don't do that. Or maybe you put something back at the grocery store. But doing the weekly check-ins and just being aware of exactly where your money is going, exactly how much money you're spending in each category has honestly made a world of difference to me and my budget and just like my money overall. So yeah, weekly check-in and transaction review. And I think I now call it spending log. Um, the one thing to note now, I do do something slightly differently because I am paid bi-weekly. So in, on top of having a um, monthly budget set up, so here I've got my April monthly budget. I also have a paycheck number one budget and a paycheck number two budget. Again, it, it doesn't really matter exactly how you do it. You guys might not want to do a monthly budget and only do a paycheck budget. Um, also, my calendar is slightly different now. So like as you can see here for my calendar, my calendar doesn't actually, you don't actually see April 1st on this calendar. You see April 8th because April 8th was the first time I got paid in April. And then you see April 22nd and it goes into this first week of May. So normally like before I wouldn't have had this week on my calendar that would have been part of May but it now is part of May or part of April because this paycheck here on the 22nd has to cover all my bills up until the, the 5th of May so again try to make it as like adaptable to yourself as you can but again very very simple layouts so again I have my monthly budget I have my calendar I have my paycheck number one I have paycheck number two I have my April my debt overview I have my sinking funds, I have my weekly check-in, and then my spending log. And that's basically all of my um, setups for my bu budget bullet journal. <laughs> Say that 10 times fast. 
So anyways, yeah, that is it for today. Thank you again, you guys, so much for tuning in. Again, my name is Amelia and this is Amelia Budgets. I think this is going to be a kind of long video. So again, I apologize. I think this is a, I think this will be useful though, especially if someone is interested in starting out a, bu a bullet, a, oh my gosh, a budget bullet journal. <laughs> um, and again, you don't have to spend a ton of money to start. There are obviously like beautiful, beautiful setups. And if you think you're going to be more accountable to yourself, if like you're using something that's more like aesthetically pleasing, don't treat my video saying that you don't have to spend a lot of money as me judging you for doing that. Because honestly, whatever works for you, um, I commend you 100% because honestly, just starting a budget makes such a huge difference. And I wish so much that I had started my budget earlier and not been like caught up in the fact that like I didn't have the proper setup but I started it eventually and I started it part way through the year which kind of stressed me out because I like to start things like like the beginning of the year but again you guys like if you're seeing this video on like May the 5th I think May the 5th or May the 4th when this goes out um, and you're thinking, oh, maybe I should start a budget. Don't wait, like don't wait until June or don't wait until July. Like do it as soon as you feel comfortable and as soon as you're able to, because honestly, it just makes a world of difference. So anyways, I hope you all have an amazing couple days and I will talk to you again on Friday with my bi-weekly budget setups for my first paycheck in May. Bye everyone.